After making the firmware upgrade video a while back for the A7 III, I knew that there were some inconsistencies with certain Mac operating systems. Now, it doesn't matter what camera you have, this process works for all of the Sony cameras. Now, I've tried to find all of the links for all of the cameras and all of the latest firmware updates. They're all in the description. So they're all linked to the US Sony site, but if the link for your camera isn't there, or there's a newer firmware version available because you might be watching this in the future, you should be able to find it with a search. Just Google the camera name and firmware update, and it should be one of the first Google results below the adverts. Now, the best way to describe this is a patch. It's on the Sony website, and it's a bit of a workaround, but it does get the job done. I was able to successfully upgrade my A7 III to the latest firmware, and now I should be able to keep using it until I upgrade my Mac again. Then I'll probably have to go through this whole process again. However, if you have a Mac with the 10.13 to 10.15 operating system, and you haven't been able to upgrade your firmware on your Sony camera, then this is what you need to do to get it all working and it'll finally get you the latest firmware update on your camera. My A6600 does need a firmware version update as well. I'm on version 1.0 and the latest version is 1.1. So I'll update that as well today. You want to keep your camera disconnected for now. Also have a fully charged battery, no SD card in the camera. And then with your computer, switch the screen saver and power saver off. Now you can switch this back on afterwards and I'll try and remind you at the end of the video. Also, if you have a laptop, make sure the power cable is plugged in and working. So A6600 firmware update is what I'll Google. It's the Sony link and I'll find the update link in the downloads and then the one for the Mac. And then click download. It'll give you all of the terms and conditions, so scroll to the bottom and click on Download. Once it's downloaded to your computer, if you're using Chrome, just click on this icon at the bottom. If not, go to your Downloads folder or whichever folder you put your downloads in. It will open a virtual drive on your desktop and it will normally open a window with all of the properties in. Sony recommends saving these to your desktop. So I create a folder on the desktop and drag them into that folder. Once they're copied, that's the first stage done. Next, you have to download the Driver Loader 1015 from the link in the description below, aptly named Driver Loader 1015 link. Once this is downloaded, unzip it and save the folder it creates to your desktop. Then open the folder from stage one, and within this, there's another folder. And that's the resources folder. Double click that, and there you will find the system software updater. And then open the folder from stage two, so you have the two folders side by side. Now drag the system software updater and drop it onto the driver loader 1015 app. It might ask you if you're sure, or that this is from the internet, blah, blah, blah. Just click on open. You might have to do this a couple of times, but just keep pressing open. As a kernel extension must be loaded, it will ask you for your password or thumbprint to make changes. So put that in or hold whichever finger you have registered to your laptop. Then the security and privacy will ask this message about driver loader wanting permission to control the system preferences. Click OK. It also may block this. If so, go into System Preferences, Security and Privacy, and then in general, Allow Access. And you might have to click the lock at the bottom and put in your password again. If you have approved this in the past, it might not ask for this. Also, you might be asked to restart your computer. If so, restart it, and then drag and drop the system software updater onto the driver loader for the second time, once it's all started up. You might then get a couple of windows talking about system extension blocked, and a Japanese one asking about security privacy settings. Click OK on both. Then you'll get a prompt to connect your camera. So you need to make sure your camera is set to mass storage in the USB menu, which is in the fifth tab, the yellow suitcase toolbox tab, and then you're looking for the USB connection. Make sure it is on mass storage. Again, with this setting, you can change it back afterwards, but you need it in mass storage for now. Then plug in your cable, either the multi-port cable or the USB-C cable. 
both will work, and if you don't have the original, most cables do work. As long as the computer recognizes your camera and your camera says mass storage on the screen on the back of the camera. I actually used one that was supplied with the Insta360X and it was USB-C to multi-port. This seemed to work, but if you have your Sony original cable, use that. Once connected and the screen on the back of the camera changes to mass storage, which takes a few seconds, click on OK. Then you might get a few more messages. Click OK. Then if it asks you if it's OK if driver loader can access files on your desktop, click OK again. Then you might get another window asking if you're sure as it's from the internet, click Open. The system software updater should then open. And if it's worked, it will recognize your camera and tell you if the firmware needs upgrading or not. What I found at this point was that it told me that the camera was already connected, so I had to disconnect it and then reconnect it again. I didn't have to do this with my computer and the A7 III, but I did have to do this with my wife's laptop and my A6600. So I just unplugged it and then plugged it all back in again. Also, you may need to click next to kind of get the software working and get it to start searching for your camera again. So try that as well if it hasn't recognized it. Then if it asks you if it's okay if system software updater can access files on your desktop, click okay again and put in your password. Once you get the system software updater to this point, you're almost there. Just click next again and it should find your camera. If it doesn't find your camera, try unplugging and plugging it back in one more time. If it still hasn't recognized it, you need to close everything down and start from this time code again. I found with my laptop I had to do it a couple of times, but with my wife's laptop it worked the first time. Now once it's found your camera, like it's done with my A6600, it will appear down in the bottom left hand corner. You can see the camera has version 1.00 and it can be updated to 1.10. So I'll click next and follow the on-screen commands. When it is updating, don't unplug anything. Don't press any buttons on your camera and make sure the computer doesn't turn itself off. So you may have to go through all of that process a couple of times to get it working properly, but it will work if you're persistent. And actually, if it doesn't work and you still can't get it working, let me know in the comments below. And then between us, we can get in contact with Sony and hopefully get them to work that patch a little bit more and get it working for every single operating system on the Mac computers. If your camera has a USB-C, it seems to work a little faster than the multi-port. My A7 III was done in about five minutes, whereas it took about 15 to 20 minutes for the A6600, which only has that multi-port. It'll take a while, but leave it until the progress bar is done then it should show that your firmware is up to date. Once done, click finish, eject any disks associated with your camera and then unplug it all. Now let me know how you got on. Hopefully this has worked for you this time. I know a few of you have had problems in getting this to work, as I've already mentioned, from reading the comments and replying to you and trying to find a workaround for this firmware upgrade. But hopefully, if you haven't found this patch already, you should now be able to get this to work with your Apple Mac computer. With my laptop, I had to go through this process a couple of times, but with my wife's laptop, it worked the first time. So it really is temperamental. Now, if you like this one and want to learn more, click on this video next. And for a photography playlist, click down here. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for weekly tutorials in photography and videography. I'll see you next time.